Now, what's also interesting uh, to note is that I can add a mask to the 2D family so that I can mask off these lines here. So to do that, you can go back to your family. Now, instead of adding lines here, we also have something called mask. So if you go to annotate, you can notice we have a masking region here. So select masking region. Also make sure to switch to a rectangle. It's easier to just create a rectangle. So start from this intersection, tap SI again, and select this intersection here. Now, if you'd like, you can lock it, but since you selected the intersection, it should work fine. What's also interesting is that these lines here actually belong to furniture projection. So what you can do is you can actually delete those other lines and only keep your mask lines here. So let me just quickly delete the other lines and then create the mask because we would have two lines on top of each other. So I'm going to use the tab key on my keyboard to select the perimeter and then click on delete. And then I'm going to go back to annotate, select mask region, use the rectangle tool and click from this intersection to this intersection here and then click on finish edit mode. So now if I load this back into my project and overwrite the existing version, boom, it hides those flooring lines as well. By the way, these are 2D families and the reason why I made them as 2D families is to reduce the size on our model. This would really help in the concept stage of your model. And imagine if you're working on a very large scale project and if you're using 2D families, it would increase the performance of your Revit model. I would highly recommend that you use 2D models, especially at the planning stage. And only if the client requires that you need to show the 3D models, then you can switch to 3D.